So here are our two expression trees from the previous video, and I think now let's try programming these things. And I'm going to do uh, both of them. I think it's a good exercise. Um, one, to just practice programming assembly language, and then two, you can see the computer compute the result. And there's 101,000 ways I could tell the processor to compute both of these, but I'm going to do what hopefully seems like the most straightforward approach. Uh, but just for reference, I want to keep these up here. So I have here the Windows snipping tool. I'm going to click New, and I'm going to grab all of this, and I'm going to push it off to my second monitor, and then I'll put them all on the same on a second page, so to say. And and the expression tree I want to do first is this standard one. So let me pause the video and set up my windows so that you can also see this expression tree on the right, and then we'll see the code on the left. Hold on. Okay, that looks like it's in view. I think we're good to go. Now I'm in the assembly file, and I have the expression here at the top for my reference, and I'm going to say this location, I'm going to do the standard ex expression tree, and down here I will do the scientific calculator expression tree. And hopefully we'll see uh, the correct results in after both these sections. The standard result should be 55. Okay, maybe I'll do this answer 55 and then down here the answer for the uh, scientific one was 25 I believe and then again that's this you can program this however you want to I'm going to hopefully do a, a straightforward approach I'm going to evaluate the nodes of this tree down here uh, as we go forward so first thing I need to do is add three or multiply three and four if you remember with multiply it you need to put one of the operands in EAX and then the 4, it can either be in memory or it can be in another register. We'll stick with registers as much as possible. I haven't even shown you how to use memory yet. We'll get to future videos on that. And so with the, but with the multiply, the answer goes in EAX, um, but it also takes up EDX. EDX has the overflow. In most cases, we won't have overflow. Obviously, with small numbers like this, we're not going to have overflow. So EDX will actually take on the value of 0. So I can't really use EDX to do my multiply. I need to use EAX for one of these operands, and then ECX or EBX I could use for the other one. Uh, here we go. Move EAX3. I'll just go left to right. We'll evaluate our tree left to right. Uh, and then at here I'm going to hit tab a couple times, put a comment out here, and just say the part I'm doing right now is 3 times 4. Move into EBX. Uh, 4, and then multiply EBX, and then right here I can say equals 12, so where will that be though? That's going to be an EAX, so EAX should equal 12 at this point, so 3 times 4 equals 12. I don't know if this commenting scheme I'm doing here is helping or hurting, but we'll roll with that. So EBX will currently have our 12, and it also helps to not make mental pictures <laughs> but actually draw the registers out here so I'm just going to put A, B, C, and D this obviously is EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX so right now at this point in our program let's see we put a 3 here we put a 4 here we multiply it against EBX which will put a 12 here and then, just to be explicit, EDX will go to a zero. And I could just not write something there, but it also forces me, if I did have something down here, I would have to recognize, oh, that will get overwritten when I do my multiply. All right, so the result of this node, which I will free freely uh, cross out, will be, the, the answer will be a 12. All right, that will collapse to a 12. I showed you collapsing in previous videos. And now the next thing we need to do is add 6. So let's just move into EBX the value 6 and then let's add to EAX the value that is an EBX. So when I move the 6, the 6 is going to go here and then I add EBX to EAX. That will bump this up to an 18, like so. F further collapsing our tree to an 18. Next thing I need to do is the divide. Well, remember with the divide, I have to use EAX 
and edx, and I'm going to divide 18 by 2, so the 18 is already where I want it to be. The edx is a 0. To be explicit, I could move 0 into edx, but I know that I did this multiply earlier, which will set it to a 0. That's probably not a safe assumption, but I'm going to make it anyway. Uh, so all we need to do is divide by 2. Well, where should we put the 2? We're done with this 6, so let's move a 2 here. So I'll say move ebx2, and then also, I need to be better about my commenting here. Uh, uh, what did we do? We did 12 plus 6 equals 18. Alright, and then move ebx2, so then we're going to do 18 divided by 2 equals 9. And I'm sorry, this is getting all jumbled up. But, uh, again, I think it's better to have these comments than not to have them. Because when you're debugging this, and this gets kind of long, oh, it's nice to have comments to the right to kind of help you keep your mental sanity as you're working through all this. Anyway, uh, we want to divide by EBX. Remember that EAX is the implicit first argument to divide, and so we want to divide by EBX. So the value is 2, so that should go down to a 9. Like so, further collapsing all this, like so, to a 9. Well, now we need to add 2. Well, <laughs> should I cheat? I already have a 2 in EBX, so let's, let's add to EAX the value that is in EBX. Alright, and so that will be 9, 9, sorry, keyboard messed up, 9 plus 2. That will equal 11. All right, further collapsing all this. Blah, 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 blah. 2 and 11. And now we need to multiply by 5. So let's move. And I need to also update my register. Very, very critical to be careful as you're moving forward through here. If you, you think most software you write probably won't be life saving, but if you ever do work on some airline software or some medical software, please by all means be very picky. Um, but then again, if you're not working on that type of software, you should be picky anyway, so you don't waste your company's money. <laughs> so much money wasted in debugging when you can just plan ahead. Uh, Alright, now we need to multiply 11 times 5, and 11 is sitting in the EAX register. So I'm going to move into EBX 5, and then multiply by EBX, like so. So let me go out here and just say 11 times 5 and I'll, I'll, I'll say equals 55. Maybe that's c kind of the commenting style I should have done for the rest of these, but oh well, there we go. EBX, um, EAX actually, EAX should have the result of 55. And notice I never used ECX for any of this. So let me, um, let's, uh, I think we're done with this here. And we're probably done with the expression tree on the right, but I want to just step through this again. Let me just clear all this off. Let's step through this again, or step through it using the computer, right? Have the computer actually assemble this file and ensure that EAX has a result of 55 in it. So uh, F11, build started, hopefully no syntax errors. Here is the memory window we don't need. We'll get to that later. Uh, we do need the registers though. Uh, control alt d to bring up the disassembly go into assembly mode f11 to go into our function and squeeze as much real estate as i can uh right there okay moving to eax 3 4 good 3 3 to eax 4 to ebx multiply ebx and eax which will change eax to a 12 or a c in hex uh put the 6 in here so right now we're working on this node right here. We've collapsed this down to a 12. So we're going to add 6 now. Add 6. Bumps that up to a... Remember what this is? This is hex. Remember this hex? If we add 6 to 12, that's 18. But in hex, that's a 16 plus 2. All right. Moving to EBX, a 2. So again, we've collapsed this. Now we want to divide by the 2. EBX, so this becomes a 2, and then we're going to divide EAX by EBX, so our 18 
divided by 2 is 9. Uh, we have collapsed this node here. We have a 9. Uh, add 2, that should be 11. So add EBX and EAX. I already had a 2 here, so that's going to bump us up to an 11 or a B in hex. And then put our 5. We've collapsed this down to an 11. Put our 5 into EBX like so. And then multiply EAX, EBX, which gives us 55, but in hex that's a 3, 7. That's 3 16s, or 3 times 16 plus 7 equals 55. So there we go. We have done the standard calculator program. Um, also working with the expression tree on the right here. Just be sure when you're working with expression trees that uh, one thing I noticed my son was doing, and you'll probably end up doing this as a rookie, is if you did something wrong, you'll get so tied up in the code, you'll forget the problem you're trying to solve. And the problem you're trying to solve is this mathematical problem and collapse this expression tree as we go along. Um, to, to that, that's what's driving our code. And don't just debug your code just to debug it. Compare it with what you're trying to do. Ensure that it's the exact same as what you're expecting. You notice here how I kind of expected everything as we went up the tree. That's important. Um, next video, I'm going to show you a little bit of optimization. Video after that, we'll do the scientific calculator mode, and should be good to go.